The first place I want to start would be the settings of our course. So if we scroll down or alternatively we can click the down arrow to hide all of our activities that's going on. When we scroll down a little bit on our page, we're going to see a settings box. In this settings box, they have a bunch of information for our course. And as we choose certain activities and resources throughout our page, this settings box will change to match whatever we're trying to update or change. The first thing we want to do is we want to go into edit settings. Now this is going to let us change a bunch of information about our course. You can give it a, cert a specific category which may be specified from the district or the school for whoever has set your course up. You can give your course a name. This is going to be the full name that, that students and instructors will see as they're searching. And then the course short name is going to be what shows up in the breadcrumbs trail or once they're logged into the course. If you wish, you could give it an ID number and a summary. If we scroll down a little bit, this is going to give us specific ways we can change how our course is going to look, not only to ourselves but to students and instructors that log in and look at our course. The first thing we want to look at is the format of your course. There are four different formats that you can lay your course out into. The first one is known as SCORM. We'll get to that one in a little bit. The second one is social. This is if you're going to have a page set up similar to a blog and you just update it in one thing right after the other. The next is topics. This is probably the one most people would like to use and we'll see how topics work as this is the way this course is laid out. And the last one is the weekly format. So you can adjust your format of your course to change as the weeks change with Monday through Friday listed with the date of the current week. If you choose topics, which is suggested, you can say how many number of topics you would like to show. And even if you have a lot listed, you can always hide them and your students can only see as many as are available to them. This is just the total amount of topics that are available to you. I have 18 and we'll see how that's laid out. Whenever your course gets started, it's going to populate with a date. There's really no reason to change that unless you don't want students to be able to join your course until sometime after school starts. So let's say you're working on your course over the summer and you may not want it to be open until the school year starts and students can see it then. We're going to talk a lot about hiding and unhiding topics and sections. So if we have hidden sections, we want to make them either completely invisible or shown in collapsed form. I suggest completely invisible, that way nobody even knows they're there until you unhide them. You can select certain new items to show. That only is specific to the weekly format or the social format. If you use a gradebook outside of Moodle, there may be no reason for you to see this gradebook. However, when a student completes a test or something, you may want them to go back and see their grades. And this is just saying if they get to see their gradebook or not. Activity reports goes along with that gradebook in some cases. That's why students can go see things that they've done in the past and stuff you can see as they're doing it. Now this maximum upload size, this is the maximum upload size for any file a student were to submit for any resource or activity. I always suggest leave this at the highest setting because you can specify it to certain settings for each topic. So for instance, if you want your students to upload a text file that should only be one megabyte in size, even though this says 25 megabytes, for that one article, you can specify it at one megabyte. So I always suggest to leave this on the highest setting. Now, you can also have what's called guest access. And what I'm going to do is set this course to have guest access so other people who may not be a part of our school can go log in and see this course. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a password. So you can't see this course unless you know the password. And the password is going to be all caps LeQ. And this little checkbox right here allows you to hide or see the password as you select one. The last thing is group mode. So what we can do with groups is have different courses set up for maybe different hours. Or if you teach English and math, you can specify them in separate groups. And by default, you can specify which group they go into and you can force them to join a group or not. Uh, with availability, you can make this, oh, excuse me, you can make this course available to all students or not all students. So I'm going to show you how you can add students to your course. And if you don't make it available to everyone, 
only those you add will be able to see this. Um, by default, the language is going to be in English. And a manager is the term that Moodle uses for another or whoever is in charge of the entire course. So for this instance, I am the manager of this course. If I had another teacher that we co-taught a class and we both used the same Moodle page, I could give that person access as a teacher to where they could change stuff in the course as well. If I had another teacher who wanted to see my course, this would be what's called a non-editing teacher, and then I can have students. So if you were using this in a normal setting for a high school or a junior high classroom, you would probably want to leave these alone. But if you're up in administration and you're using this for your teachers, you may want to change your student name to teacher, and you may want to change the word teacher to administrator or something of that nature. So that's pretty much the course settings of a Moodle page. Thank you.